Colonel Mike Bloomfield. It's a real Thank pleasure you. to have you on Australia in Space TV uh, here at the Avalon International Air Show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Wonderful. Uh, mission 110, right? Uh, you were the commander of the Space Shuttle. Um, yes, STS-110. That was we, my final mission in We had space. the pleasure of uh, interviewing Pam Milroy uh, oh, back at IOC in Milan. Uh, so it's great to have another commander uh, on. Um, and you just uh, gave some uh, presentations here uh, at, uh, at Avalon for the yes. Endeavour Scholarships. Um, one thing, your last mission, the SST-110, was a day uh, mission uh, in terms of the launch. Maybe just describe that for the audience. Uh, the, your previous two missions uh, were launching at night time, which sounds quite... Uh, yeah, unfortunately you couldn't look out the window, but yeah, the, the last mission was quite special. Yeah, so the first two were at night, so I couldn't see anything out the window, but my last mission was a daytime mission. Um, and of course, during launch, we're trying to get to this final speed of Mach 25. Um, as we were going through Mach 13, I looked out the left-hand window and I could see the east coast of the United States. And the thing that stands out there is Cape Hatteras. It's a very prominent uh, landmass on the east coast of the United States. And just south of that is Kitty Hawk. And I remember thinking to myself, wow, 100 years ago, humanity was jumping off of sand dunes trying to figure out how to fly. And now here we are as part of humanity going through Mach 13 on our way to Mach 25 crew of seven 40,000 pound payload in the back to go visit three of our friends that were living on the International Space Station. So a very special moment uh, in time. Well, it's an amazing even uh, then you, you realize how special it is. Uh, given that we're here in 2025, uh, the space station uh, is coming to the end of its, its operational life uh, and the amount of launches that we're seeing now and even with uh, the, the Crew 9 that just came back last week. Uh, what's your current observations of the space sector? More exciting, uh, sort of gearing up, I think, for Space 2.0, and yeah, just your general feelings right now. Well, I think it's a very exciting time in space right now, right? We have more capability to get humans off the space, I mean, off the planet into Earth. Uh, there's a, a lot of uh, private money that's going into space yeah. now, trying to figure out how do we put humanity in space on a permanent um, basis and how do we fund that with private funds? How do we develop a business case so that uh, industry can take over and do it rather than government? Yeah. Uh, what's your current roles at the moment? And we'll, we'll move on to the Endeavour scholarships here uh, as well, but you're still active, right? So I'm fully retired from NASA right now. Yes. I have two grandsons that I love spending a ton of time with. Nice. I'm heavily involved in STEM. I'm involved at uh, Space Center Houston, which is uh, the visitor center for Johnson Space Center. I'm on the board of directors there. And then, of course, I'm a Goodwill ambassador here with uh, Kalman Worldwide to the uh, Endeavor Scholarship. Right. Well, a longtime friend of, of Tom uh, Kalman as well. Maybe what was the key message you had with, this, with the scholar, scholarship winners this Well, so the whole scholarship mission, the idea is to pass all that information that I talked about with the ability of humanity to go from standing on the earth to now uh, uh, flying around the earth. How do we pass that on to the next generation? So the Endeavour Scholarship named after uh, Al Warden and the Endeavour vehicle that he flew to the moon. Subsequently we've had a, a shuttle named Endeavour. Subsequently we've had the Dragon Capsule named Endeavour. So the idea is, is to take kids, get them interested in STEM by sending them off to a space camp for one week and we do that with eight teams from around the various countries around the world. Well, I think they're, what, 20-odd patches now uh, there? Yeah, something like that, 24, I think, total. Right? I think uh, the other one uh, standing on stage next to uh, Australia's uh, flagged astronaut, Catherine Bennell pegg uh, Yeah, just uh, what's your first uh, thought, first uh, time you're meeting Catherine? Yeah, today was the first day I've met Catherine, wonderful lady. I mean, she's very motivated and does a great job of uh, motivating the next generation, yeah. and I'm really hopeful that uh, sometime soon she'll find herself in space and be able to come back <laughs> and share her story with a whole new generation of Wonderful. Australians. And I've got a photo of you two together actually, which was quite special. But Mike Bloomfield, Colonel uh, Bloomfield, thank you so much for joining us here uh, on Australia in Space TV uh, and enjoy the rest of the Avalon International Air Show. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks, Mike.